Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. I love today. Today is like, it's like a holiday for me. It's like a don't anybody talk to me about anything but football day for me. I'm very, very, very excited, appreciative. The top things trending on Twitter, Fly Eagles Fly, and the hashtag for the Falcons. Very excited about this. Falcons and Eagles playing up against each other. They played in the playoffs against each other. They're both in the NFC, and they're going to start off the season for us, the 2018-19 NFL season. And, and I told you that Mike and I would bridge the gap for you the Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com, that we would take your hand and we would walk with you through all of this time where there are no games and give you football every week. And I applaud Mike and appreciate Mike for joining me and making that a reality. And before you know it, here we are this morning on a Thursday, and we're talking about here you got to set your fantasy lineups. you got to be ready to watch the games. Where are you watching the game? What's going on? These games count now. So we started this thing earlier than we have any other year, and I thought to myself, wow, football season feels like it's a while away as far as games go, and all, and now we're here. So it just goes to show, time flies when you're having fun. We're proudly brought to you by the Wildcat Sports Pub and the Penn and Trophy Center inside of this wonderful, beautiful thing that we enjoy calling the Fantasy Football Power Hour, and I'm so thankful to have Mike Sofka here with me of Hall of Fame FantasyFootball.com. My good sir, happy football Thursday. It's been a long time, but I'm happy I finally get to say it. Yeah, I'm excited. This reminds me of the day, and you probably remember this as well, reminds me of the day I got my driver's license. All of a sudden, the future looks real bright. I got all this stuff planned. I got stuff that's going to be happening. I'm going here next week. I'm doing this on this day. You know, I'm excited. I am ready to go. More than happy to have this game coming up today. The first thing that we're going to talk about is, ironically, the, the one of the last things I talked about with Papa Joe, and that is the reason why I didn't draft a certain player named Le'Veon Bell. I, I got asked in my rankings, Dan, he's a top three running back. Why isn't he in your top three? I said plain and simple. He's number six. He's outside of the top five because he's not with the team right now. Not with OTAs, not with training camp, not with practice, not with the preseason games. And ultimately, it does two things. Well, when it comes to a running back, especially, as I said earlier in the show, not only are you more susceptible to injury when you don't show up to the team, but running backs are more susceptible, as it looks, throughout history than anybody else for getting injured as they step back into the season. So this is where we sit. This is where we stand. He's not on the team. Le'Veon Bell is not there. I stayed away from him in the fantasy drafts because I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't think it would go on this long. And now he's in a very dangerous position of his team is pissed off at him. He still hasn't reported. And on top of all of that, He's more susceptible to injury historically, if you follow that way. Yeah, this is just about math. It's about math on both sides. It's about math for the Steelers wanting to ink him up on a franchise tag and then use and abuse Le'Veon Bell. Because if you have a Ferrari and it's the last time you're going to drive the Ferrari, you're going to open it up. You're going to want to get on a racetrack and see what that thing can do. You're going to want to get on some country roads and tear it up. Well, that's exactly what the Steelers are probably going to do. He'd probably get 40, 50 touches, and that's no exaggeration because, you know, Pittsburgh offense runs through Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. So what they don't want, what Le'Veon Bell's side doesn't want, is they don't want a lot of wear and tear on that vehicle because he's getting ready to go into free agency, and it's looking less likely that Pittsburgh's going to be interested or that he's going to be interested in Pittsburgh. So this is the thing where he's got to report by week 10, otherwise he loses that free agency moniker. So the bottom line is the bottom line. It's math on both sides, and we're stuck in the middle. As fans, as fantasy football players, we're stuck in the middle. Now, if you were fortunate enough not to draft Le'Veon Bell, you're you're laughing at the guy who did. But if you do have Le'Veon Bell, though, this isn't over. It's not going to be over for a while. There is a chance they come together on common ground in a few weeks and cut this short, but I doubt it. It might just stretch out to week 10. And if that's the case, don't panic. 
There's probably some guys on the waiver wire. If you need some assistance, go to the website, hit me up, shoot me an email. And the most obvious one is James Conner. This is the guy who has the most to offer for Pittsburgh, and this is the guy who has the most to offer you. Now, he's not going to put up Le'Veon Bell-type numbers, but it's better than a zero or no one. So with that in mind, go, go get you some now. The flip side of this, if you're in a keeper dynasty type situation, I don't have to tell you, go out and get some Le'Veon Bell because he's going to be back next year. Maybe give up some draft picks or a draft pick or a player that you have an abundance of. This guy needs a running back. You got an extra one. By all means, do that. I'm not so excited about trading for him in a redraft league, but, you know, if you have Le'Veon Bell, also put the word out to other owners if you're in a redraft league. Hey, I'm interested in picking up a running back, but affordable. Make sure you make it obvious that you're not looking to get used and abused. This is an emergency situation. Even though the other owners may consider it an emergency situation, don't give up the farm. Be smart. You know, you were smart enough to, to, to have a good draft and to listen to us and follow us, and, and hopefully we've been able to assist. But you know what? The bottom line is still the bottom line. You're going to want to win, and you got to manage your team week to week. So even if you have to pick up and drop guys, even if you have to get a guy that's a part of a committee, it's better than a zero, and you never know. Injuries happen, and maybe maybe that pendulum will swing back the other way in your favor. Absolutely. you know, And that's the thing, and that's why you know James Conner, I wanted to draft him toward the end of the draft because I love his story. I just wanted to have him on my team. And then it became, oh, thank God I have James Conner because he's done pretty well in the preseason. And on top of all of that, look at the situation we're in right now. We did get a question, and I want to answer the question here. Running back advice. What free agents are plausible to gamble on in the free agent pool? So looking at the league specifically, and uh, this is one of the players we have in our league. Orange Avenger is asking this question. So available right now as free agents are Duke Johnson Jr., Frank Gore, Jonathan Stewart, as well as Matt Breda, James White, Mike Gillisley, who's now with New Orleans, just to name a few. Those are the guys that are available. So, Mike, I'll defer to you, and then I'll answer the question. Of those names that I just named, and Theo Riddick as well, of those names that I just named off, who would you suggest they pick up in this situation? Now, I don't have our scoring system in front of us in this league you're referring to. If it's PPR, I'm going to say. It's it's yeah. non, it's the non-PPR one. Okay. Then you want to get some Matt Breda. I think he's going to be the guy that emerges from this with the most touches. He's going to he's gonna be the more so the bell count than, than, than Albert Morris. I think Albert Morris has got a lot of mileage on the tires and they're just going to run that thing like a committee and try to manage those those touches for each. But I think between Breda and Morris, I like Breda better. I think he has more upside. If you are in a PPR format, you're going to consider Duke Johnson or Theo Reddick. Either one of those guys should help you out. Um, you know, he, he, either one of those guys are not the starter in their respective teams, but they're the guy who usually comes in at third down, second and long. They're the guy who can catch the screens, catch the passes, and, and maybe even do something for you. So I, I would tend to go that route. I, I think the guy with the most upside is Matt Breda. Yeah, you know, Matt Breda, when we're looking at him right now, you know, obviously Mike Gillsley got bumped off of New Orleans, of, of the uh, Patriots heading to New Orleans. So that's not one that I'm really sold on right now. As far outside of that, you know, James White is by committee, and the committee got bigger this year. Uh, Rod Smith, he's got Zeke Elliott in front of him. I like Theo Riddick and Duke Johnson Jr., even if it's not. If it's PPR, definitely. If it, if Duke Johnson, without question. But if it's non-PPR, I still like Duke Johnson and Theo because I know they'll get something, but it's just what they'll get. And the thing that concerns me about Theo Riddick is that he does get injured, but he plays injured. In the case of Matt Breda, you know, he's the top running back on the depth chart right now. Jarek McKinnon's out for the season. So, and Alfred Morris is there, and I picked up Alfred Morris in one of the leagues. I want to see what he'll do, but, I, you know, I'm not sold on Alfred Morris like I would be on Matt Breda. So I guess if we're looking at it right now, I'd have to agree with you, Mike, that Matt Breda is probably the best one in a non-PPR situation with the players that are available. And I like to answer the question as succinctly and as clearly as we can. So if you do have a question and you send us a fantasy question and you say who's the best running back available, let us know what the list looks like or screenshot 
what's out there in your free agents because we could be giving you names that are not available. So let's make sure that we help you out where we can. And Orange Avenger happens to be in one of our Syracuse leagues, so that helped us out a little bit here. And uh, we got another question. What is the lowdown with LaShawn McCoy? What do they have to worry about? So this is kind of a, a background thing, Mike. LaShawn McCoy hasn't been suspended, but there's a notion or at least a sense that this could be an ongoing or a fear that this is an ongoing issue. What do you think about the LaShawn McCoy factor, knowing that he's by far the best player in Buffalo, and as of right now, he is, he's on the field. I mean, it's he's not off the field, but could this – make people feel like Ezekiel Elliott situation, I guess, like last year. Yeah, I don't blame people for feeling that way because you don't know what you don't know, and that's the scary thing. But, you know, you pointed out the situation, you know, right there. You said that he's the best guy in Buffalo. He is. And that's the scariest part is he doesn't have an offensive line. He doesn't have a lot of weapons around him. He doesn't have an outstanding, you know, Pro Bowl quarterback, Pro Bowl receiver. There's no Pro Bowl players blocking for him. I, I just, I'm looking for a positive thing here in Buffalo, and I'm, I, I'm really having a hard time finding it. But, ironically, sometimes that's where the best fantasy players come from, is from the bad teams, because that's all they got. They're going to run that guy. They're going to run that guy. And when they're done, they're going to run him again. So I think there's more upside than downside here. If you remember some of the Zeke situations and and even most recently the Jameis Winston situation, these situations took a year or more to evolve. And the same thing with the Tom Brady suspensions. It took time for that to happen. So while I'd like to think that in week five, all of a sudden you're you're not going to hear, oh, my gosh, McCoy suspended for the rest of the year. I don't think that's going to happen, but there's a process, and and part of that process is an appeal, and this thing can be drug out throughout the season. So I'm I'm a glass half full guy. I say go ahead and roll the dice with McCoy. If you, if you drafted him, you probably got him at a bargain price, unless you you know foolishly overpaid. You know, I in some drafts I stole, I absolutely stole him, like in the sixth or seventh round. I was I was beside myself, so I had to take him even though I'm not a strong believer in McCoy or the Bills. So at a certain point, you have to find either value or you're either going to gonna, gonna, gonna make that movement or you're going to get off the pot, as he used to say. The bottom line is still the bottom line. He's not, a good, he's not on a good team. He's a decent player. He can help you. He has tremendous upside. And, you know, if you got McCoy, go ahead and play him. Don't panic. Everything will be all right. And I think it's going to take a year or more for this thing to pan out. Yeah, you know, I think – and I did take a chance on him one time this season in one of the leagues. I I rolled the dice and said whatever. I get you know I guess I'll give him a shot. And in and, and I already had running backs that I liked at the point that if he wasn't going to be the guy, it was going to be okay. But you know it, it is it, it does cause concern because the Buffalo Bills have once again gone into a season putting nothing around him and or having some talent that's been untapped like a Zay Jones. So for me, I mean, it's he's the best option they have. He's the seemingly at times the only option that they have. And we, you know, we're sitting here with an ongoing situation. He just said recently that he'll take care of it. And he, he hasn't really replied more than anything is I'm focusing on the Ravens. I'll take care of that other stuff. So not, not a lot of conversation on, on you know, and, and just to kind of brush it off like, oh, it's that other stuff. Well, it's a it's a pretty big stuff. It's a pretty big bag of stuff. So we'll see what happens from here. But unlike Zeke, he wasn't suspended going into the season and appealing it. He hasn't been suspended yet. He hasn't been convicted yet. Nothing has happened yet. So you could be okay. But it is one of those things where I understand, just as Mike said, why people are concerned. Staying with the running back, we may see one of the best running back versus games in week one if on paper at least on paper and on and and if you got both of these guys on your team you're sitting pretty you're feeling good going into the season and that is Jacksonville at the Giants where we get to see Leonard Fournette and Saquon Barkley on the same field against each other for the first time ever in the NFL thoughts on this game and the fantasy value of this game and if you have both of them do you throw them both out there knowing that Jacksonville's defense is number one in the country? Well, if you got both of them, I don't know how that happened, but God bless you. 
You know, I think the bigger question is what's going to happen in that Jalen Ramsey, Odell Beckham Jr. matchup there. You know, Ramsey's talked a lot of smack in the offseason here, come out with a list of, of quarterbacks saying how bad they are. Eli was one of them. You know, and Odell and, and Ramsey, ironically, these guys are friends. They hung out quite a bit over the summer. They, you know, jawed with each other, and, they, you know, they're, they're, they're on friendly terms. But, you know, those terms have got a little less friendly since the schedule came out, and they realized they're playing each other in week one. They always what if it, but, you know, when you're an AFC team, you don't always play the NFC. So, much less the NFC East, much less the guy, you know, you're going to be matched up against is, is one of your friends. So it's a unique situation. I look for Odell to maybe have um, maybe four or five catches, maybe 70, 50 yards, maybe a touchdown if they're lucky. I look for it to be a mediocre performance by the Giants. I look for the Jags con- to continue on and be able to run the ball. I think if the Jacksonville defense can do a fraction of what they did last year against even this revamped New York offense where they've got better offensive linemen. They got better at running back. Their receivers are back healthy. It looks like they're headed in the right direction. But how can you stop or top the speed and the tenacity of the Jacksonville Jaguar defensive line? And then, oh, yeah, they got cover guys at the corner. They got hard-hitting safeties. They got they got it all. They got the package. So I look for Jacksonville to continue the domination here. I look for Jacksonville to win the game. I look for Leonard Fournette to have a solid performance because I think they're going to try to run the ball right down the Giants' throat. And I think that, you know, if you're looking for – value fantasy wise the one guy i can pick out of this game is a leonard fournette or a saquon barkley i think saquon's going to catch more passes so if you're in a ppr league that's a better deal i got um i got leonard fournette ranked the number five running back this week i got saquon ranked the number 11 and that's standard scoring uh you know quarterback not so much either team i don't think that i like either guy really that much uh you could do much better. They're both in the twenties in my ranking, and you know Odell Beckham. He's he's going to get it. He's going to get the targets. So just on targets alone, I'm going to give him the number eight position. You know, uh, against all other wide receivers in standard scoring, and you know I don't think there's much to write home about in the tight end situation. You got Evan Ingram coming back from the concussion protocol. He still sneaks into the top 10 that I have at number nine in standard scoring. And, you know, receivers, I wish I had more to report on either side of the ball. There's a lot of questions yet to be answered. It's going to definitely be an interesting game. But I look for Jacksonville to prevail, and I look for a mediocre performance by Odell Beckham. You know, good performance by most any other athlete. But that's not the standard for, for, for Beckham Jr. It's a much higher standard. So it should be a real interesting game. Yeah, no, I think it's going to be a good game in, in the grand scheme of things, and ultimately I'm picking Jacksonville in this game. I think playing their defense and special teams against Eli Manning as well as playing Leonard Fournette's a good go, and Saquon Barkley, here's the debut, folks. We're going to go through these matchups and give our fantasy advice. It feels good to do this, Mike, doesn't it, to finally be able to talk matchups? It feels great. I love this. Yeah, yeah I <laughs> This is, this is my favorite part of doing everything is talking about the game, talking about what could happen, trying to trying to trying to set things up so we can have a winning football season. So let's hop into it. Hall of Fame Fantasy Football dot com is where Mike Sofka is from, and you can find me at wake up call dt dot com, the fantasy football tab. There's a quick link on the main page and on fan, on the fantasy football tab on wake up call dt dot com. There's our NFL prediction page. There is also uh, there's the NFL prediction page, there's the rankings, and there's our fantasy football shows that you can listen into and catch up on. So make sure that you do that going into this week and going into this season. And Mike, I usually put my picks up, but I think it would be kind of cool to do this if we have your picks up there as well. So I'm going to jot down your picks, and every week we're going to have both of our picks up there for who's going to win the game. Sound fair? Yeah, sounds right. good. Awesome. So we're going to go to that first game, which is tonight. And I'm so happy we moved the fantasy football power hour to Thursday. So now we can include Thursday night football in the mix. And it feels so good to do it. I'm very excited to finally usher this in. So the first game that we have to talk about, Mr. Sofka, is the Falcons at the Eagles. We know that the starter for the Eagles will be Nick Foles. If you have team quarterback like you do in my league, you have Foles and Wentz, which I think is a great tandem, obviously. What do you think about the fantasy value for the Falcons and the Eagles in this game? 
Yeah, you know, on the Falcons' side of the ball, I think their quarterback situation and their offensive play was mired in muck last year and first year under that Sarkeesian system. But that's no excuse. These are professional athletes, and they should have and could have adjusted. So I'm not sure where the breakdown is. And, you know, I've downgraded Matt Ryan across draft boards this year. I've downgraded him this week as well. Although I like the Falcons in this game, I think you're going to have mediocre performances by both Nick Foles and Matt Ryan. I've got them ranked 16 and 20 respectively in the quarterback rankings. Now, when I go to running back, it's a little bit different situation. Devonta Freeman, how can you not have this guy in your starting lineup? You're going to have him in your starting lineup. If you have him on your team, he's going to be in your starting lineup. Same thing with Jay Ajayi, more of a running back to this week in my rankings, but you know, still a guy that you can put out there. Receiver-wise, well, not so much outside of Julio Jones. I think Julio Jones is the only answer in this game at wide receiver till we're proved different. He's the number seven receiver in a standard scoring league for me this week. You know, I, I'm hard pressed to find an Eagle that I can say that, you know, is top 10 or top 20, top 30 even. So I'm not even going to go there. The one guy you can count on, though, is probably the tight end, Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz, the number three tight end. And, of course, Austin Hooper is going to make an appearance here, but I don't think he's living up to where he needs to be quite yet. He's more of a tight end two slash three. So you're going to find your value in Zach Ertz, and you're going to find that this game is um, up and down a bit, but I don't know if it's going to be so high scoring. I think there's going to be some mediocre play. It's going to be a lot of running the ball, but – both of these teams, either one of them, could open it up or could shut the other team down. I like the Falcons ruining the Super Bowl hangover of the Philadelphia Eagles today in the game. Yeah, you know, I think this is definitely going to be a good game. It's going to be an interesting one. I, like you, have downgraded Matt Ryan, and, and I just I stayed away from him, honestly. I thought there was other guys out there that were better suited for my team or better to put out there, in my opinion. So Matt Ryan is... It, not in my great graces here for, for this game. I'm not a huge fan of him going into this season. So the way that I look at it is, you know, uh, for me, I like Julio Jones and Devontae Freeman. That's a given for Atlanta. When Julio Jones is healthy, he does some good things. Even when he's not 100%, he does some good things. Tevin Coleman, not bad. I don't know if you want to use the tandem going out in week one. I would kind of lean more on Devontae Freeman and see what Tevin Coleman does to start off the season. And then outside of that, to take a look at the other side of things for the Eagles. I like the Eagles quarterback. I do like Nick Foles in this game. You know, if you could play two quarterbacks, then that's a great week for you to put somebody like him out as your QB2. I don't think he's a QB1, but he is a guy that, that I, I mean, I love this. I love the Philly quarterback tandem, and I like that. I dra- and I drafted it. I drafted the Foles Wentz because we get the team quarterback. So I don't think it's a bad decision to make from that perspective. Jay Ajayi, kind of a flex guy for me in in his situation to kind of see how things come out. Corey Clement, same type of thing. He can catch the ball and he can also run the ball. Did some great things in the Super Bowl. Helped him win the Super Bowl. So I like Corey Clement out there. And uh, Nelson Aguilar, he's another wide receiver I would look to in this game to do some nice things. So nobody wows me in this game fantasy-wise, but there are a bunch of players on both sides of the spectrum. So, Mike, just to be clear, you're going with the Falcons in this game, correct? Yep. All right, and I am going to side with the Eagles in this matchup. Next matchup that we have is on Sunday, September 9th. There's a whole slew of games, and we'll start with the Bills and the Ravens. Fantasy value with Buffalo and the Ravens. Let's start with the road team and the Bills. Yeah, you know, I I, I said it before, I'm having a hard time finding some positive things to say about what's going on in Buffalo, and I think the one guy you can play from Buffalo is McCoy. I, I think he's not the top running back this week by any means, and that defense from Baltimore is going to step up a little bit. If you have the Baltimore defense, I don't need to tell you to play him. You're going to play him. But I got McCoy, the number 15 running back this week. You know, Joe Flacco's, you know, a wreck. Peterman's beyond a wreck, so I don't see anything in quarterback there. And receiver-wise, maybe a Crabtree as a as a low-end wide receiver, too, just based on volume. Uh, and wise again, you know, I, I, I'm finding 
difficulty finding something positive here for Buffalo. I, I'm just going to leave it at that. If you have <laughs> McCoy, play him. If you don't, I, I have nothing nice. My mama said a long time ago, you don't have something nice to say about somebody. Don't say anything. So I'm going to leave it at that for Buffalo. The Ravens, you're going to get tremendous value on the defense. You know, their running attack is a, is a mixed bag as well. You know, I think Alex Collins is going to be worthy of a bottom-end RB1 when everything shakes out in this game because I think they're just going to run the ball. They're going to run the ball, and then they're going to run the ball some more because I think the Ravens are going to dominate in this game. I'm going to pick them to win, and I'm also going to play a few Ravens players like I mentioned. Yeah, you know, for me, I think the Ravens are going to win this game as well. I'll agree with you on that pick. I am going with the Ravens. It's on the road. The Bills don't look that great. Nathan Peterman, you know, I was behind him last season coming into the season because I got to watch him in college, you know, play for Pittsburgh, and I, and I thought that Buffalo would have, you know, a better option than what he put out there last season. It kind of goes to say where Josh Allen is with everything, that they would hand the ball to Peterman, or Peterman's upgraded himself at this point. But really on the Bills, the only thing I feel good about is LaShawn McCoy. Zay Jones, the guy that I like that came out of East Carolina, but I haven't seen anything to have me tell you to put him on your roster, let alone play him. Charles Clay is not a bad option, but again, he's got a new quarterback. So this is kind of like sit and wait type of thing. And I know people will be mad, oh, Dan, you know, Charles Clay had two touchdowns and you didn't say to play him. But when I look at this, the Bills are that team that could score three points in this game and the game could end 10-3 to or it could be 27-3 to or 27-6. to I don't see the Bills dominating. I think if Peterman starts this game off slow, sluggish, and throws a bunch of interceptions, that they got to just shift to Josh Allen in the here and now because Bills fans are not going to get behind that. So really for me, it's LaShawn McCoy. I know Chris Ivory's there from Jacksonville last year, and, and I wasn't a big fan of Chris Ivory's fantasy value really ever since he left the Saints. So it's LaShawn McCoy and nobody else for Buffalo, in my opinion. And then for the Baltimore Ravens, you know, they kept their three quarterbacks on their roster. I don't know if I'm looking at any of these to – save your game or, or to make this a high scoring game if it was any wide receiver it would be Michael Crabtree and I like Alex Collins in this game if he's your RB2 or your flex guy I like Alex, Alex Collins because I do think they're going to run the ball I do think they're going to pressure Buffalo and I would consider the Baltimore defense and special teams I am also going to pick the Ravens to win this game Bucks at Saints what do you have for me Mike going to be an interesting game because I think the Saints defense has improved. I think the Bucks offense is a, a mixed bag of tricks. You don't know what you're going to get. It's kind of like that box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get. The, the Bucks are being led by Ryan Fitzpatrick this first couple games due to the suspension to Jameis Winston, but I don't think they're going to do themselves any favors on the road in New Orleans. I got Fitzpatrick ranked as the number 23 quarterback, and then I got New, or New Orleans. You know who their quarterback is, Drew Brees. And even though Tampa's made some improvements and strides on their defense, it's a home game for Drew Brees, number three quarterback on my rankings this week. I do look for New Orleans to win this game. I do think that they're going to have the biggest margin of victory of any team this this week in New Orleans and running back wise they got the best running back or one of the best running backs in the league in Alvin Kamara it doesn't matter that Melvin Ingram suspended for a couple games it's going to be the Alvin Kamara show they're going to monitor his touches and his targets you know they're going to manage what he does but how can you hold back a thoroughbred if you want to run you let him run on the flip side running the ball for Tampa you would have thought that Ronald Jones would have been the guy by now the guy they reached out to get Peyton Barber is a, a top-end uh, running back three or a flex play in my book. He's number 26 on the list. And wide receiver, Mike Evans is usually one of the top guys. He's downgraded to number 16 or, you know, a, a, a top-end wide receiver too. New Orleans, though, New Orleans has got the guy. The guy you want is Michael Thomas, number four receiver this week. Michael Thomas, a guy who can run past people, stretch the field, and he can jump up and get that ball in the corner. He's got some height. He's got some hops. I like Michael Thomas a lot. Going to tight end, 
Yeah, I wish I could report something really positive. <laughs> O.J. Howard and Cameron Braid are going to cannibalize each other, but I think O.J. Howard is going to be the guy who starts to emerge this year, so I like him a little bit better as a tight end, too. And we don't really know who that guy is that's going to emerge out of New Orleans. It looks like it's going to be old man Ben Watson, the number 18 tight end on my list this week. And again, I think the Saints are going to blow out the Bucks at home. Yeah, I, I don't really put too much of anything on the Bucks. I, I don't – I mean, yeah, they got Mike Evans. I'm not sold on Peyton Barber. I, I like Jacquez Rogers, but they never play him unless somebody gets hurt. He does have fantasy value, but, again, they don't play him unless somebody gets hurt. So, you know, it's one of those situations where I'm not too fond of the backfield there. As far as injuries go, we obviously have the four-game suspension for Mark Ingram that, that people know about. He's eligible to return on October 8th against Washington, which is pretty cool because it's my dog in heaven, Shady's birthday. So happy birthday early to Shady. To Tampa Bay to take a look at this, uh, obviously, Jameis Winston, you brought up that suspension. And uh, Vita Vea is questionable for Sunday, the defensive tackle with a calf injury that was drafted in this year's draft. Outside of that, to, to take a look at both of these teams, I'll start with the Bucks because I always start with the road team. I'm... <sighs> I'm not a fan of of a lot going on in Tampa. Mike Evans is not bad. Whenever I go to draft him or he's available, my head says he's not a bad player and he's the best option. But then my then my head also says to me, but he's on Tampa. So Mike Evans, I would I would kind of lower him to a flex guy for you this year or this week week one. I wouldn't put him as a one or a two. Your Cameron Brayton OJ Howard situation. I've been on like both sides of the situation the last couple of years and they both can do things, but neither one of them separated. I like you, Mike thought that OJ Howard would come in and take the job, but he, he hasn't yet. So I am cautiously optimistic that OJ will since I've leaned more on him this season, but if they can't figure it out after this season, I'm just going to stay away from it altogether. As far as the new Orleans saints go, on their side of things, I like Drew Brees in this game because I'm not worried about Tampa's defense. I like Elvin Kamara. He's somebody that I think, you know, is an every week play. Michael Thomas, I, I like in this game. Cameron Meredith is a flex guy because they're playing the Bucks, And I really am hoping that I'm right about Cameron, Cameron Meredith and that what he could have brought to Chicago as a number one receiver, he will bring to New Orleans and spread out the field. So I'm looking forward to that. And Ben Watson, he might catch some touchdowns. He might get one touchdown, seven yards in this game. He might get a couple touchdowns over the middle. So he's not a bad one to look at as well because they're playing the Bucks in this matchup. And I'm not sold on either defense, but definitely not Tampa in this one. So, Mike, you're going with, I would, I would venture to say, you're going with the Saints. Like you said, I am going with the Saints as well. The next game that we have on the docket for week one of the NFL season for 2018-19 in the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly brought to you by the Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, and the Penny Trophy Center in East Syracuse, New York. Texans at the Patriots. What do you got in this one? Yeah, you know what? It, going to the evil empire is always a tough thing. The Patriots did give up the, the home opening loss last year. If you were playing in survivor pools, that blindsided a lot of people. I still like New England in this game. That being said, I think they're going to win by at least the touchdown. I think the Texans are back. I think the Texans are dangerous right now. And they're being led, of course, by Deshaun Watson coming back from that injury. Number eight quarterback on my ranking this week but you know you take the flip side you're going up against the number two quarterback on my ranking and Tom Brady even though Houston can get after the quarterback and put pressure on them even though they got a pretty solid defense you know I still gotta like Houston in this game and it starts at the quarterback like I said the evil empire putting out Tom Brady now running back wise that's a little bit different situation you're going to have to hunt and peck, and it could be a different guy each week. Right now, I like the favorite out of that backfield in New England to be James White. I think he's the guy, it's secretly the guy, even though they paid Rex Burkhead a lot of money, and even though they're wheeling and dealing and rolling guys in and out of there, bringing in Sony Michelle, and but he has a minor injury to his knee, he's overcoming. I think we're going to see different guys all the time. I think it's going to be the team effort that they usually put out in New England. So I don't think you can invest too heavily on a running back for New England. And and I think Rex Burkhead may get a share of that as well. 
I think you could roll either one of those guys out there as a as a running back two or a flex and be happy with the results. They're especially in a PPR league. Those guys are designed to catch the ball on the flat and take off. Get them get those guys the ball in space. That's what they do. Receiver wise, New England has really struggled at the receiver position, especially now that Edelman's out for a couple games. But I like DeAndre Hopkins on the other side of the ball, number two receiver on my rankings this week. And that's not PPR. He might be tied in PPR for Antonio Brown. You know, those guys are going to get the touches. So I like DeAndre Hopkins a lot, especially PPR. You know, I, I'd be hard pressed to say this is the guy. But as far as New England goes with the receivers, I think you got to look at a Chris Hogan. I think it's going to be split up between Chris Hogan and Gronk. I think you're going to see Gronk spread out wide. He's going to be in the slot. He's going to be in tight. We're going to see more Gronk. And then when we're done with that, we're going to see even more Gronk. You know, with this situation at receiver for New England, they're going to rely on their most reliable guy. And that's Gronk until he gets hurt. So ride that hot hand with Gronk. If you're playing Dan a daily fantasy make sure you include him and you know I, I don't know how you can not include him and on the other side of the ball we're struggling to find the guy at tight end for Houston you know it very well could be a, a name that's familiar in the Florida parts here in a Jordan Atkins and he is he kind of lit things up a little bit but they kind of kept him under the un, under the wraps in Houston so look for him to emerge as the guy at tight end if you if you have some challenges at tight end on your team if you're not sure about your tight end you have a guy that you can get rid of you might want to take a flyer on him start watching this guy he's going to be the tight end of the future in Houston but I like I like New England in this game for for good reasons they're just a much better team and it's in New England yeah, you know, I th- I think there's going to be, you know, in this game, obviously I'm picking New England because they're going to be at home and because it's New England. It's hard to go against them. But on the Houston side of things, Deshaun Watson, if you have you – know, I, I, he's coming back. This is his first game back. So, But I like what he could do. I like the – I mean, Kansas City put up a ton of points to start the season last year in Foxborough against the Patriots. So I don't – rule Deshaun Watson out, especially if he's your best option. If you have Deshaun Watson and Mitch Trubisky, or you have Deshaun Watson and Andy Dalton, or something like that, I would lean on Deshaun Watson. I don't like the running backs in Houston, so I'm not even going to talk about it. DeAndre Hopkins, I I like him. I I think he's worth putting out there, and that's why it's hard to say no to Deshaun Watson because he makes DeAndre Hopkins' career potentially – resurrect itself the power rank that he had last year according to some was number one for DeAndre above Antonio Brown in certain situations Uh, Will Fuller the fifth if you need an extra wide receiver if you're going with three or four he's an option to have out there I've never been a big fan of the Belichick era's defensive backs I've never been a huge fan of their secondary so that's an option for you and for the for the receivers on New England Chris Hogan's the only guy that, that I would draft, and I did. And so, I mean, I'm looking at him. Julian Edelman has a four-game suspension. Chris Hogan has shown that he can get you fantasy points, but now he's asked to be the guy. He's not under the radar. He's not number three. He's number one. So we'll see how he responds, but I do like him. Rex Burkhead was upgraded to probable in this game. Sony Michelle is questionable for week one, but the Patriots always have everybody on the injury report if they could put everybody on ir and play them all they would do that legally if they could figure it out away but you know the patriots seem to be liked by commissioner roger goodell so maybe they could do that james white it would be i agree with you mike probably the best option for you at running back right now sony michelle let's see if he plays tom brady obviously hard to say no to the guy if you have him on your team if you have him and russell wilson or him and aaron Rodgers, then it's a conversation but Tom Brady, not a bad play in this game. Next up in the match, and we're both going with the Patriots. Next up in the matchups here are the Niners at the Vikings. Jimmy Garoppolo has the hold of the offense for the first full season ever. It's the first time he'll go into a season as a starting quarterback outright. And on the other side of it, it's the first season that Kirk Cousins will call Minnesota home. What do you think about this one? Yeah, you know what? I, I like Garoppolo. I think he's got some tremendous upside. I just don't like him in this game. He's going into Minnesota. Now, Minnesota, 
next to Jacksonville, probably the toughest defense in the league scoring wise. They led in multiple categories. They're just they're quick to the ball. They they can pressure the quarterback. They can defend the deep ball. They can stop the run. I like everything about Minnesota. So I want to be clear. My pick is going to be Minnesota in this game. But I really think that you know you're going to find the most value in Kirk Cousins. I was able to pick him up late in a lot of drafts, he might still be on the waiver wire in your league. He's the number seven quarterback this week against San Francisco at home. Now, running back-wise, Dalvin Cook. I mean, he's the guy in Minnesota. He's a high-end RB2. I need to see something more before I give him that RB1 classification coming back from that knee. I think he's going to be okay. I just need to see a little more. And then we talked about it earlier. Sam Fran's going to be a two-headed monster between Brighton and Alfred Morris. I have those two guys ranked as bottom-end running back threes. Again, kind of like the Brayton Howard thing. They're going to cannibalize each other. But team-wise, collectively-wise, committee-wise, they should do okay but again, they're going against Minnesota in Minnesota. It's a tough place to run the ball. You know, you look at the receivers. I really like the one guy, Marquise Goodwin. He's a bottom end wide receiver too, but you know, he's gonna have a hard time catching the ball in Minnesota. Minnesota's defense, again, if they can get the ball out quick, you got a chance. But it's gonna be tough to say that's easier said than done. On the flip side there. You know, I think that Adam Thielen and Stephen D- Stephon Diggs, my my apologies there, top end wide receiver twos. I think they take away from each other, but I think Thielen's edged out Diggs a little bit, and I think Thielen can actually be considered a bottom end wide receiver one this week as well. He's on that borderline. You know, those guys are, are are guys you can depend on either one of them, and if you were able to get both, God bless you. But you know, I hate to you know I hate to be you during bye week. I'm looking at the the tight ends. My sleeper tight end this year. I've been seek. I've been trying to keep it under wraps. The secret got out a couple times, and some people I was competing against drafted this guy from underneath me. George Kittle. This guy has breakout year written all over him in San Fran. I got him as the number 14 tight end this week. Again, San uh, San Fran's playing in Minnesota, so that changes the rankings a little bit. And, you know, on the flip side, Kyle Rudolph is going to be a guy that you can count on. He's a bottom-end tight end one. I look for this game to be more Minnesota, but I look for it to be very entertaining because I think both teams are very good. Yeah, I think both teams are are going to be good in this one. They both have quarterbacks I'm excited to watch. I like Jimmy G, but like you, I don't know if I necessarily like him in this game in Minnesota on the road. I like Minnesota's defense and special teams, and I think that, you know, they they could er, er, (laughs) – I think they could do some good things in this game. I think Minnesota's defense could challenge Jimmy a little bit, but I do think ultimately Jimmy's going to be a quarterback that you can rely on from week to week this season. Alfred Morris was brought in to be the number one guy, and then Matt Breda. I don't know if I lean on either one of them outside of a flex position if you're going deeper. Not my running back one, not my running back two, maybe my three or four in those flex-type situations. And then as far as wide receiver, Pierre Garçon, he's, I feel like he's going to have a resurgent year, so I'd consider him for this game. But I don't know how much offense Minnesota is going to want to allow in this one. This game could be in the 20s, or it could be less than that for San Fran. So, Kirk Cousins, I, I, again, it depends on who you got on your team. I think that Kirk is going to have, this is a put-up-or-shut-up time for Kirk Cousins. There's no excuses because he's on a team with a ton of weapons. Fantasy-wise, that I feel good about this week, Delvin Cook, Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs, and considering Kyle Rudolph and potentially the defense and special teams. So Mike and I are both going with the Vikings in this game. We'll take a step aside. Well, before we take a step aside, let's do this Let's do this Florida game. They played each other last season, and ironically, they played each other in the same situation. I don't know how this, hand, how this happens two years in a row, but the Titans went on the road to face the Dolphins last year, and they'll go on the road to face the Dolphins this year. I thought it had to be home and home, but last year the Titans went on the road to face the Dolphins, and the Dolphins won that game 16-10, to albeit they did it with their quarterback, Jay Cutler, who's not there, running back Jay Ajayi, who's not there, and running back Jarvis Landry, who's not there. So they won by six, and all of their leaders are not on the team anymore. What do you think about this one, Mike? 
Yeah, I think Miami's in trouble this year. I think they're in trouble almost as bad as the Bills. I'm not feeling them at, at all. And at home, Tanny Hill's the number 26 quarterback on my ranking. But, you know, Marcus Mariota does not do it that much better. He's been meh at best at times. So, hopefully things will rebound for them. Hopefully they'll catch a, a resurgence here. Hopefully things have tightened up a bit for Tennessee. I got Marcus Mariota ranked as the number 17 quarterback going into Miami. Me. And then I'm looking at the running back situation. They're going to have to give the ball to Kenyon Drake. You know, I, I there was some talk that you know they were going to be able to split some carries there, and and things were going to look different in my. They're not. They they're still going to have a challenge running the ball. Kenyon Drake's a bottom end running back too in my book here. And as far as Derrick Henry and and um, Deion Lewis. I think Deion Lewis is going to be the more the third down guy. Derrick Henry, I got ranked as the number 20 running back this week. Deion Lewis, more the PPR guy. I got him as a wide receiver. I'm sorry, running back three on the wide receiver front there. I think that um, Miami is really looking for that guy to step up. He's looking for a guy to step up for Jarvis Landry. That might be Kenny Stills. Devontae Parker is out with an injury here, and it looks like Kenny Stills is going to be forced into the spotlight. But even when Parker's on the field, I think Stills is going to be more the guy. I think Parker would have done something by now. If we were going to see something out of Parker, it would have already happened. Not really excited about him. So Kenny Stills, number 18 wide receiver this week. Now, Corey Davis, that's right, Corey Davis, a name not many people know, number one receiver in Tennessee. He was brought in to be that guy. Didn't really happen last year. Now just by sheer targets and being in that place, right place, right time, he's the number one receiver. He's number 27 on my listings here. He's top end wide receiver three for you. Don't count on too much, but on sheer volume, he's going to get the targets. So I'll take a guy who's getting targets any day of the week because that's opportunity, and I like opportunity. You know, Tennessee has the consummate professional and Delaney Walker at tight end. Miami hoping to catch lightning in a bottle with Mike Gusecki. I got him as the ranked number 21 tight end, whereas Delaney Walker's number six on my tight end list. And again, I like Tennessee to edge out Miami. I think it's going to be a closer game than people think. But I, I, I just, I'm down on Miami this year. I think it's going to be a long year for the Dolphins. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of Miami. There's a reason why the abbreviation for Miami is MIA because that's where their team is most of the time in recent history. Without, and I could go all the way back to Zach Thomas and Jason Taylor and say that they haven't really been relevant since then. So this team has truly been MIA. As far as who I would play in this one. Kenyon Drake, I, I, I feel like we're not getting any of those running back ones and twos for me yet in week one. I keep saying flex guys. Well, Kenyon Drake is another one of those flex guys. I like Kenny Stills as one of your receivers because he does get opportunities and he has had players come out and look for him. I, and here's the irony. Luke Falk was wa- put on waivers by Tennessee and was picked up by Miami before going into this game where they will face each other. You can tell Miami has no idea who their quarterback's going to be and is nervous about Ryan Tannehill potentially getting injured again as they have four quarterbacks on their roster with Brock Osweiler, David Fells, and Luke Falk as well on the team. Outside of Kenny Stills and Kenyon Drake as a flex guy, not really feeling it with anybody. I'm not a big Derrick Henry fan. This may be the game to play him, though, because he's playing Miami's defense. And Corey Davis, he's supposed to step it up. He's my wide receiver two or three. He's not my one on your roster because he hasn't proven himself, but he's one hell of an athlete coming out of Western Michigan. And obviously Tennessee liked him enough to draft him fifth overall last year. And that's as simple as it is. Rashard Matthews, he's another guy to consider as a flex at wide receiver because he's playing Miami, and Delaney Walker at the tight end position is another guy to look at because, simply put, he's playing Miami. We'll take a step aside, and and I would venture to say, Mike, we're both picking the Titans in that game, obviously. Yes. So, so far to recap, I have the Eagles tonight, and Mike has the Falcons, and then we both have the Ravens, the Saints, the Patriots, the Vikings, and the Titans. We will come back to speak on the rest of the matchups, get you ready for fantasy, make our game predictions, and so much more inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour that is spilled in to some extra time. We're in overtime here. Everybody tell Donovan McNabb the rules. We'll be back in just a moment. 
This is a wake up call, Fast Break. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Consistency is, well, consistently hard to find. Unless you head to 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York, the home of the Penn and Trophy Center, who has been serving us Central and Upstate New Yorkers, as well as beyond, for decades. The Penn and Trophy Center on 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York, gives you an amazing and unique way to customize a memory today. Say it with the Penn and Trophy Center. Be it an Employee of the Month award, a sports award, something for your business, engraving for your family, your loved ones, anniversaries, birthday parties, and so much more, including remembering somebody who served in the military. Say it with the Penn and Trophy Center. 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York. The definition of consistency is Penn and Trophy. Browse their products on penandtrophy.com. That's penandtrophy.com. And call them for more information at 315-422-8797. That's 315-422-8797. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash Call. DT, you know the Wake Up Call with Dan Satora is Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. But you also know that Wake Up Call with Dan Satora extends out when it comes to spending time with this fine gentleman, Mr. Mike Sofka. We always have a great time on the show and always enjoy speaking together and having a good time together. So I am uh, I'm elated and always appreciative of having him here in the Fantasy Football Power Hour. And this is exactly what we're doing, proudly brought to you by the Wildcat Sports Pub, where you're watching the games Thursday, Monday, and Sunday, as well as Saturdays for college football. And you know what? You might as well just go there throughout the week because they're open Monday through Sunday, and they have amazing food, great people, and it's a family-friendly sports bar, which is a very difficult feat to overcome and achieve, yet... Danny and Heather Tome have figured out a way to do so, and I commend them for the family atmosphere at a great sports bar that has the NFL ticket in every single game that you want to watch. So get yourself over there to 3680 Milton Ave in Camillus, New York. And, of course, our trophies, our Lombardi Championship and our toilet, our bronze toilet, both brought to you by the Penn and Trophy Center. The Penn and Trophy Center can help you out here in East Syracuse, right by BJ's Wholesale Club. And if you're out of town and you're listening to the show and you want your trophies done professionally and well, you can go to them on penandtrophy.com and they will ship anywhere in the United States. So don't just restrict yourself to this area. Know that they can help you out in other areas as well. With that being said, we're, we got some more games on the docket. Mike and I have Bengals at Colts coming up next. And off the air, we've agreed that this is the toss-up week, which is great for the NFL ratings-wise because you don't know where half the games are going to lean, and they're very hard to choose from. And one of those games is the Bengals at the Colts. What do you think about this one, Mike? Yeah, well, as I said, I like the Bengals. I like the Bengals, but I'm not sure that they can beat the Colts in Indianapolis' first game of the season, so i got to go with the home team there. Look, Andrew Luck is going to be back. He has some unanswered questions. I still think he's a bottom-end quarterback one in this game at home, opening the season. But you know what? We could see anything. I I, I don't know. We, we really haven't seen much of Andrew Luck, so it's going to be very interesting. 
not really a fan of the Red Rocket, although he is a high-end QB2 in my book this week, Andy Dalton going into Indianapolis. So you might get some value there, especially in a daily situation. Running backs where it's at, Joe Mixon seems to be a beast. He's a number eight running back. I think he's going to unleash this year. I think he's going to be injury-free and not have Jeremy Hill there. You know, he's got Giovanni, Giovanni Bernard, but Giovanni Bernard's more the third down guy. He's more the path catching guy where Joe Mixon could be the every down guy. He could be that heavy tool. And I think they're going to use a lot of Joe Mixon this year. You know, when you go to the other side of the ball, Marlon Mack is still a question mark and he's injured as well. I think this is the time we're going to see a guy that went undrafted in a lot of leagues. He may be on your waiver wire in your league. So if you've done your homework and you got that guy where you're saying this is the bottom guy and if something falls out, I'm going to drop this guy and pick up that next rising star. Here it is, drum roll, Jordan Wilkins. You're going to see Jordan Wilkins on the field. A lot of people have been saying, oh, it's going to be Naeem Hines. Naeem Hines may be the pass-catching guy. He's going to have a hard time because he can't pass block very well. Jordan Wilkins seems to be the every down back. Now, I've tempered the expectation for him. He's a bottom end wide, a bottom end running back three this week, but I think you're going to see the emergence of Jordan Wilkins this week. You know, on the other side, of the, on, the, on the wide receiver front, you know, you got to go with A.J. Green. Consummate professional, constantly a top five wide receiver. You know, I, I, I like A.J. Green. I like him a lot. And T.Y. Hilton. He's a bottom-end wide receiver one this week against Cincinnati at home. If Andrew Luck is going to have any success, it's going to come through the hands of T.Y. Hilton. And you know what? T.Y. Hilton's capable of getting it done. I like him as a bottom-end wide receiver one this week. And going into this week as far as tight end, maybe we'll see a resurgence of Tyler Eifert. Again, me being the glass half-full guy, I'll roll the dice with Eifert. He's the number eight tight end on my team this week. And the other side of the ball, I'd have to go with Eric Ebron. You know, I know him and Jack Doyle are going to split some things, but Eric Ebron always seems to be at the right place at the right time, except he's usually injured. <laughs> going to get something from Eric Ebron. It's going to be this week. I like Eric Ebron and Jack Doyle. They kind of cannibalize each other, but they're both tight end twos this week. Again, I like Indianapolis in this game, a coin flip game. I think they're going to edge it out because they're at home. Yeah, I have them winning this game because they're at home as well. I'm not going dis- to going to disagree with you about about that one. I do think it's going to be close. I'm not an Andy Dalton fan a, in fantasy football by any stretch of the imagination. If you want to try out AJ Green or look at John Ross, they're low end wide receiver twos for me this week. Uh, well, I'll say high end wide receiver two for Green, low end wide receiver two for Ross. I, you know, the running backs, I don't like them in Cincinnati. I don't like the situation. I got to see more from Mixon and see somebody divide. At home, Andrew Luck, I, I you, you said a low-end quarterback one. I'll stick with you on that, Mike. I'm not sold on Andrew Luck because he's often injured. Now, he has almost double amount of touchdowns as he does interceptions in his career in the NFL, 132 touchdowns to 68 interceptions, but... He's only played in 22 of 48 games in three regular seasons combined in the last three years. So let's see how he does, but he's playing Cincinnati. So not a bad opportunity for him to come back, but we'll see where he's at right now. Uh, As far as Jordan Wilkins, I'm cautiously optimistic about him, as well as Naheem Hines. Hines would be a low-end flex player. Jordan Wilkins, I'm not ashamed to say to put him out there this week. Not as your number one. But, you know, as one of your backups out there on the field, I would like to see him. And T.Y. Hilton, you know, it's hard to keep him on your bench as well because usually when you do, there's some shock and awe coming from him. Next, and we're both going to pick the home team, the Colts, in this game. Steelers at the Browns, Sands, Le'Veon, Bell for now and for potentially the foreseeable future. What do you got for this one? Yeah, you know, the Steelers usually struggle when they open the season against the Browns, but not this time, even without Bell. You know, Cleveland's got a lot to show, and I think they're going to be a good team. We saw them on hard knocks. We saw what they did in the draft. We saw how they've been rebuilding that team, and they've done a fantastic job. I just don't think they're ready to beat the Steelers and Antonio Brown and Ben Roethlisberger yet, again, regardless of the running back. Now, the running back's the thing that's on everybody's mind, but Ben Roethlisberger is where it really starts. He's a number nine quarterback for me this week. 
And on the flip side, I wish I could say something better, but Tarod Taylor, and it's Tarod, not Tyrod. We've been saying it wrong all these years. It's Tarod. Tarod Taylor is going to be a top-end quarterback, too, at number 14 on my rankings. Even though he's going up against the Pittsburgh defense, he is at the home of the Brownies, and they're going to get raucous there in Cleveland. You know, I, I like wide receiver Antonio Brown, but if Pittsburgh's going to do anything in this game, it's going to be through James Conner. James Conner, the guy we talked about, the guy we said that, you know, pick up late in the drafts, this is the guy that's going to be on the field for Bell. But he's not going to get Bell-like numbers, so don't even think that. If he's available on your waiver wire this late, by all means, pick him up. He's probably already gone, though. The secret's out. James Conner should have a pretty good game, number 17 running back on my rankings. And, you know, when I flip the coin over and I go on the other side of the ball, well, who am I going to pick? Who am I going to pick? Who's going to be the running back? Is it going to be Hyde? Is it going to be Chubb? I think it's going to be Hyde. I think he's had the better preseason. I think he still has what it takes. And I think Chubb's got some learning to do as far as pass blocking schemes and the playbook. So I think Hyde's going to be the guy. I got him number 23, bottom end, running back two this week. And here's the piece, the response, Antonio Brown, the number one wide receiver in the game. You know, you could say he and DeAndre Hopkins are a one and one A to each other. And Antonio Brown's the guy. You know, Antonio Brown for a while in my book was the top fantasy football player because of his value exceeds everyone else's by such a far margin. Now some of the running backs are starting to catch up, but Antonio Brown's still a number one receiver. You know you have to trot him out there. I don't have to tell you that. And for the Browns, I wish I had somebody better. You know who I have that's better? Juju Smith-Schuster, and he's on the other team. He's on Pittsburgh. He's a bottom-end wide receiver one. So there's two wide receiver ones in Pittsburgh, and I'm struggling to find one in Cleveland. I think if somebody's going to emerge in Cleveland early in the year, it's going to be Jarvis Landry, and at best I have him number 33 this week, a bottom-end wide receiver three. And, you know, I wish I could say something really positive about the tight ends here. I wish I could say something great about Njoku or Vance McDonald. I think Njoku is a borderline tight end one, tight end two. And it looks like Vance McDonald is going to be the number 20 tight end on my list this week. And, again, I think the Steelers will struggle more than people think going into Cleveland. But I think this game's all Pittsburgh. Yeah, you know, I think even without Le'Veon Bell, I got Pittsburgh in this game. It's hard to go against them in this matchup, even though they are going to be playing on the road without one of the top running backs in the country. Uh, James Conner, I like it. I like what's going on with him right now, and I like what he has. Jalen Samuels might do some fun things as well. I would watch him and just kind of pay attention because he's probably most likely out there as a free agent right now. But I like James Conner. And this is, you know, this is no wasted draft pick. This was no, let's put him on the team for, you know, sentimental value. He's a, he's a player and he's a gamer as well. So I like James Conner in the game. I like Big Ben in the game. I like Juju in the game and I like Antonio in the game. And then on Cleveland side of things, they got a bunch of running backs, but they got rid of Matt Days. So they don't have four anymore. They have three. So on their side, I would look to Jarvis Landry as a wide receiver too. Uh, with Josh Gordon, if he's going to play, which as of right now, what I'm looking at, he should be good to go. I would look at him as well as a wide receiver too. And then Tyrod, like you said, that we've been calling him Tyrod forever, and he just corrected everybody and said it's Tyrod. Well, no matter what it is, I'm not taking the quarterbacks in this matchup. And Carlos Hyde, I would consider in this game. Duke Johnson Jr. is a flex guy by the definition, because he catches passes. I think he's more of the catching back on this team. And Carlos Hyde, I would consider. This is one of those teams and where I want to see how everybody performs in the sense of how, how much are they going to use Hyde? Are they going to use Chubb? How much will they use Duke Johnson? Will he be running the ball or just catching? How's Jarvis Landry going to play in here with Josh Gordon? Antonio Callaway got himself in a lot of trouble in Florida. What's he going to be like on this team? So there's a lot of question marks on this but uh, David Njoku, also, if you get to play two tight ends, he would be a tight end, too, for me this week. But uh, Hyde, Landry, Gordon, not bad plays. And then Pittsburgh, it's the usual suspects, except for instead of Le'Veon Bell, it's James Conner. And Juju Smith-Schuster, baby. I feel good about him this year. I'm excited. Chiefs at the Chargers. What do you have for this one? Yeah, I like the Chargers in this game, whether it's at home or in Kansas City. It is in L.A., and I like the Chargers. 
I think they always have a tough game with each other, but I think the KC defense is suspect. I think the Chargers are going to prove some people wrong. They're going to come out to a faster start. Past couple years, they've had slow starts, and it's cost them playoff position in the end of the year. I think the Chargers are primed and ready for a big run here. I think they're going to run right through that AFC West. I like Phillip Rivers as the number six quarterback this week. You know, I, I, I like Phillip Rivers to have consistency. I think he's a solid QB1 all year. You know, there's guys that are better than him, but all year over time, he's going to be a QB1, not a doubt in my mind. And then if you flip the script, Patrick Mahomes, young guy, can stretch the field, cannon of an arm, and he's got some talent around him. So even though this is not a, you know, this is really the young guy, the second-year player, even though this is really his first big attempt at leading the team, I still think he can do it, and he's a he's a quarterback ranked number 15 on my list this week. So you can find better guys. You can find worse guys. You can, you know, he's kind of in the middle there. You know, and, and then running back. Running back is where the biggest difference is, I think, here for most people. You know, you look at Kareem Hunt. You look at Melvin Gordon. Usually if you have one of these two guys on your team, you're going to do well. I have them both ranked six and seven, Gordon and Hunt, respectfully, on my running back list this week. But look out for a guy who was supposed to be the starter going into last year in a Spencer Ware. He's back. He's going to get some touches as well. So look out for that guy. You know, there's a there's a lot of talk about the wide receivers in L.A. for the Chargers. People thought it was going to be Tyrell Williams. Then Mike Williams emerged. Now it's back and forth. Look for a Mike Williams or a Tyrell Williams to be a wide receiver three for you this week. I don't really believe in either one of those guys so much over the other. But how can you not talk about Keenan Allen? Constant top five, top ten receiver. He's definitely a wide receiver one. And on the other side of the ball, well, it's all Travis Kelsey, in my opinion here. I mean, who are they throwing the ball to? It's Demarcus Robinson. I mean, well, they're going to throw the ball to Tyreek Hill because he's the fastest guy out there. But even Tyreek Hill can only do so much. He's a bottom-end wide receiver one. And like I said before, Travis Kelsey's the guy. And the Chargers brought back the old man. <laughs> Antonio Gates is back in the fold, retired, convinced to walk away from the game, now convinced to come back now that there's a tremendous need. Don't get excited. You're not going to see the Gates of old. You're going to see him come in on short yardage plays. You're going to see him in the red zone. You're going to see him in the end zone because that's what he does. He's the number 27 tight end on my rankings this week. And, again, I like the Chargers. I think they're going to get off to a good start this year. Yeah, you know, I, I, in this game, I'm going to go with the Chiefs on the other side of things here. I like the Chiefs. I think that there's a lot of weapons. You know, this is obviously contingent on Pat Mahomes and how he's going to respond to being in this position now that he is the starting quarterback. They started off the season last year with Alex Smith taking down the Patriots in Foxborough. And now they're at the Chargers. You know, I, I do think the Chargers have some good things. I am happy that they brought back Antonio Gates for, I believe, his 16th season, which is pretty insane. But I'm going to take Kansas City in the game. As far as who I would play out there for your fantasy, obviously Kareem Hunt as well as Tyreek Hill. I would look at Sammy Watkins as a wide receiver two or three and Travis Kelsey I would put out there as well. Spencer Ware, I'm going to watch. I want to see how often they utilize him. I, I, I'm not going to be against him being a flex player for you because I don't really trust in the Chargers defense. But Kareem Hunt is obviously the guy that I'm looking to to uh, do big things as a sophomore. Hopefully he can continue that. But Spencer Ware, not a bad backup and should be somebody, if you have him, to at least put him out there as a flex for this week. As far as the other side of things, Phillip Rivers, he gets a lot of yardage. So if you get... Points for yardage, you know, in my league, every 10 yards that a quarterback passes, you get a point. So if he passes for 100 yards, you get 10 points. And Phillip Rivers could get you 20 points just off of that stuff. So pass it for a couple hundred yards. So Phillip Rivers, not a bad bet in this game. Melvin Gordon, obviously, I like him. And Keenan Allen, 
is somebody that I would throw out there. The rest of the wide receivers kind of are a roll of the dice, so I don't know exactly what that's going to shake out to be and look like because Tyrell Williams and Mike Williams and Travis Benjamin, you know, no, it was every other week somebody was something. So I would look more to Keenan Allen. And then Antonio Gates, not a bad guy if you have two tight ends. I don't know if he's your dominant number one. I don't think he is. Travis Kelsey is my favorite tight end in the country above Rob Gronkowski. But Antonio Gates, good to see him back. Seahawks at the Broncos, Mike. What do you have for this? Yeah, this is a game where you're in some spots where just real hard-pressed to find guys that are fantasy-worthy or have fantasy value. You would think on big name, you know, teams like this, it'd be different. I have this as a close game. I'm going to give the edge to the Broncos because they're at home. You know, Case Keenum had the big contract game in, but he's still a bottom end quarterback, too, in my opinion, especially this week against Seattle. Now, I know people are saying, oh, Seattle, they lost everybody. Seattle, they don't have the players. They still have some of the better players. They're a good team up and down. They just were very top-heavy for a long time, and it's finally come time to pay the piper. It's like, you know, if you keep, you know, in a car business, if you keep buying a car and rolling negative equity into the next car and rolling it into the next car, there's going to come a point where you're going to owe $50,000 on a $25,000 car. It's not going to be. And that's where Seattle is. They're unloading these contracts. These players have gotten long in the tooth. You know, they need to let go of these players, and they have. Slowly but surely, through attrition, they've been getting these guys out of there and getting new guys in. And I think that you're going to see some talented players on Seattle that you've never heard of before, and I'll show you that in just a minute here. Russell Wilson, number 10 quarterback on my ranking this week. Outstanding if you have Russell Wilson. He always proves himself to be a solid quarterback one all year and on the running back side you're going to see two guys rank close together here but their careers are going different directions chris carson is a guy that through injury you know kind of had to take a step aside last year but before the injury he looked like the best thing they had running the ball they were churning through some running backs and when your quarterback is your leading rusher you got problems well it turned out that chris carson per game he was playing was the guy and I still believe in the guy. They brought in Rashad Penny, but now he's got an injured hand, and he hasn't picked up the pass blocking that well. So Rashad Penny's going to see some action, but he's not going to see anywhere near the action that Chris Carson is. And on the other side of the ball, well, you got the guy that I think could be rookie of the year, and Royce Freeman. They put all their they they put their faith in him, and rightfully so. He's had an outstanding camp. He's had an outstanding preseason, and I like Royce Freeman a lot. If you don't have him on your team, and you got the opportunity to trade for him. Go get him because he's the guy that you can count on to carry the load for your team this year. He's going to have nothing but more upside and higher rankings the rest of the year. Wide receiver-wise, you know, I feel bad for Seattle. When when your number one target, the number one guy you have on your ranking, is not even a wide receiver three on my rankings, you got a problem. And I'm talking about Tyler Lockett, the number 39 wide receiver and on the flip point, you got the opposite problem. You got two guys that are capable of being number ones. Now, this week, they're both bottom end twos, top end threes. And I'm talking about Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. And, you know, if I asked you real quick, name me the tight end on either team, you'd be hard pressed to do that. These are the guys I'm talking about who are going to be household names come the end of the year. Nick Vanette for Seattle. He's a bottom end, a tight end two for me. And then Jake Butt. B-U-T-T, Jake Butt, bottom end, tight end three for me for Denver. And I think just through targets and through, they're the only guy on the team. Basically, they're the guy. You know, they're not the guy as far as fantasy goes, but they're the guy on that team. So they're going to get the looks. And I'm talking about the net and butt. And again, I like the Broncos in this game at home. Yeah, you know, this is going to be, to me, <laughs> to me, this game is, is it, you know, Seahawks and Broncos. I think that this could go either way. I'm going with the Broncos at home as well. I'm excited to see Case Keenum and what Case Keenum can do on this team because I think that Case Keenum got a raw deal. He helped bring the team all the way to the game before the Super Bowl, and then he got sent packing so they didn't appreciate him then. They didn't seem to appreciate him at the end of it all, and they let him go. And he went to Denver, and now he's the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos. So I like it. Seattle's defense isn't what it used to be. It doesn't have the usual suspects on there. Some of them are the same. Some of them are not. So, you know, in this, in this matchup, 
I would like to put Royce Freeman out there to see what he could do. I'm staying away from Devontae Booker. Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders, hard to keep those guys off your list, so you got to put them out there. Cortland Sutton, watch this. Some people drafted him, some people did not. He could be out there on your free agent pool right now, just sitting in the pool, wading in the water. He's a guy that you have to look to. He has great hands. I covered him at SMU. You don't want to forget about that name, Cortland Sutton. On the other side, Russell Wilson, I like. Chris Carson, I like. And the potential, you know, Doug Baldwin's not a bad one to throw out there as well. Rashad Penny, questionable for week one with a finger injury, and I'm just not... I, I, I want to see what he could do. If Chris Carson's healthy, that's the guy I'm looking to. And C.J. Proceis, God bless his heart, this man has been fumbling the ball, fumbling the opportunities. He was placed on injured reserve already this season. So my God bless and a speedy recovery to him. I feel terrible about everything that's happened in his career. Cowboys at the Panthers. What do you have for this one? Yeah, Cowboys at the Panthers. I got to go in a close game again. I got to go with the home team. I'm going to go with Carolina. Look, Carolina's got a guy who likes a lot of him. Cam is the me me guy. He'll call his own number. So if you got Cam, especially in a even if it's in a four point touchdown league, because he's going to run some touchdowns as well. So I got Cam as a number four quarterback this week. Whereas on the other side, well, Dak Prescott, he's not going to be as highly ranked this week going in there. I think he's a bottom-end quarterback, too. Now, the running game is where all the dollars are on both these teams. You can't go wrong with with you know what they have in place in a McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey, he's run the ball more so between the tackles. He's no longer that scat guy. You just got to line up in the slot or throw him the ball in the flat. He can run the ball, and they brought in C.J. Anderson to make sure that you know, they keep running the ball up the gut. Well, McCaffrey's going to get most of the carries. Anderson's not even worth a spot on your roster right now. If you're in a super deep league, you know, you maybe, or a touchdown-only league, maybe he's going to get some goal line touches. He's number 50 on my rank of, of running backs this week. And then looking at the receivers, there's a receiver I'm really excited about on the field in this game. Blew the charts off the exposed, adjusted explosive index that I use just narrowly missing the Hall of Fame type numbers he would need on that index. And again, to find more information about that, you can hit me up on my website. It's not my stat, but it's a stat I use, the Adjusted Explosive Index. D.J. Moore, although he's number 51 on my rankings this week, I look for him to have a lot of upside for you. If he's still available and you have a spot, you know, don't don't cut somebody's you know, that you're counting on, but this is a guy who's a dark horse guy. You know, anybody who knows fantasy football and been studying can see this guy coming a mile away. He's a great receiver. He might be the number one receiver in Carolina by the end of the year, you know, but their number one target in Carolina has been Greg Olson, number five tight end on my rankings right now. And Dallas, they're having a hard time at receiver. They're having a hard time at tight end. You know, if you're Dallas and you're looking for a receiver, it, 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 you're throwing a ball to Alan Hearns, but that's strictly because of math. He's number 53 on my roster, and he's supposed to be the number one option there in Dallas. You know, you can look further on down for a Michael Gallup, who had outstanding camp and and preseason. I like Michael Gallup. It's just I don't like him as a starter at all right now until he shows me something in a real game. And like I said, Dallas struggling not only in the receiver, but in the tight end department as well. I don't know. Can you name me the tight end for, for Dallas right now? I don't think anybody can. I thought they thought it was going to be Gaithers. I, you know, it could be Blake Jarwin. You know, it could be a couple guys. So I would stay away from that whole situation at tight end until it stabilizes itself. And, you know, I still like Carolina at home over Dallas. Yeah, I like Carolina at home over Dallas as well in this matchup. I just... You know, the Dallas Cowboys, they – now, I like Alan Hurts, and I think that Alan Hurts has a lot to offer. I've obviously spent the last couple of years covering him in Jacksonville. I think that there's a lot to be said about what Alan Hurts can do, and I'm excited about him getting an opportunity to get out there and do his thing. So, with that being said – you know, they, they got rid of a number one, and Hearns has never been a true number one. Nobody else has been a true number one on the team. And then at their tight end position, it, it is. It's who's going to be the guy, who, where is the plan. You know, you, you would imagine that potentially they wanted Dallas Goder and just didn't get to him quick enough because Philadelphia 
went and traded up to get him before the Cowboys could take him and put him on the roster and use it against Philadelphia for the next decade. So Jeff Swaim and Blake Jarwin are there. Dalton Schultz is there as well. And Rico Gathers, uh, none of the tight ends excite my fantasy brain for this upcoming week. Uh, Alan Hearns in this Carolina game, not a, not a bad option as a flex or a low-end wide receiver too. Ezekiel Elliott, obviously worth the play. Dak Prescott, not sold on it, not a big fan as far as going into week three. Cam Newton calls Cam Newton's number. He loves Cam Newton. Mike and I have both said this, not knowing that the other person had said it. We both said the exact same thing. Cam Newton likes himself some Cam Newton. And when push comes to shove, Cam calls his own number. So Cam Newton's not a bad play in this game because I don't trust Dallas's defense. Christian McCaffrey, I like him too. And I don't care where Devin Funches is on the depth chart. DJ Moore, in my opinion, is going to evolve to be the best option for them. I would like to see what he could do this week. So he is worth the play for me. And Funches, I pray and I hope the best for him. I won't draft him anymore because he's let me down too many times. But that's not to say that I don't always hope that these guys do well, which I do. Redskins at the Cardinal, and I'm picking the Panthers. Redskins at the Cardinals, what do you have for this? Yeah, you know, I, I like Arizona in this game. Again, in a narrow game, I think it's another one of those coin flip type games. I like Washington's defense, I think, has improved. But the Arizona defense, they, you know, they've been up there in the top categories in just about everything defense related whether it be sacks, pressure on a quarterback, they got some of the best cover corners, you know, and, and they have a decent team. They got a decent guy at the helm there in Sam Bradford. He's a he's a game manager. He's a guy that can do something. Until he gets hurt in three weeks, this guy never makes the season. So I think we're gonna see another quarterback there in Arizona before too long in the Josh Rosen. It's just gonna be a matter of time. But for right now it's Sam Bradford's team and he's got only got a couple of the best players out there, and one of them is David Johnson. David Johnson, you know, you can argue before the injury last year, he was the number one guy in fantasy. And, you know, I still got to see a little something, but I'm confident he's up there. He's up there with the girly. He's up there with Zeke and Le'Veon Bell when he gets back in the fold. So I think if you have David Johnson, you already know all this. He's a dynamic player. He can catch the ball, PPR standard. He's definitely a guy you want on your team. Now, on the other side of the ball there, Washington, what they do, they ran out and got him some Alex Smith. Alex Smith is a mid-level quarterback, two number 18 on my rankings this year. And what is Washington doing to run the ball? They ran out and got old man Adrian Peterson because it looked like they were going to split some time between some other injured players, Samaj Perrine, fat Rob Kelly, who slimmed down. Now he's a uh, medium Rob Kelly, I guess, the medium, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> but the, the bottom line is mired in a committee situation, so I'm staying away from the running back situation in Washington. Wide receiver-wise, you know, I really like what they have in Arizona in Larry Fitzgerald, but he's getting long in the tooth. He's an old man as well. There's going to be some fresh and upcoming talent, a Christian Kirk coming out. You're going to see some of him, but, again, temper your expectations. He's a rookie, and that offense still gets passed through Larry Fitzgerald in Arizona. And you know what? On the flip side of the ball, I'm struggling to find something really valuable for Washington. Maybe a Jamison Crowder as a bottom-end wide receiver three. And tight end, if you're going to play Jordan Reed, this is when you play him, beginning of the season, before he gets hurt. This is a guy who can't stay off IR, can't stop getting injured. He plays with a reckless abandon, only comparable to Rob Gronkowski, and he puts his body out there. You know, if I'm his coach, I may tell him to scale that back a bit, but how can you do that? This guy's an athlete. He's, I've seen him score six touchdowns in the game. This guy plays the game all out, full throttle. That's what he does, and unfortunately in the NFL, that's when you're going to get hurt, and that, that is what it is. He's a number seven tight end on my rankings this week. And, you know, on the Arizona side, I don't know who they have. Ricky Seals-Jones, he's a bottom end tight end, too, for me. So I like Arizona in this game. I think they're going to narrowly win against the Redskins. So get you some Arizona Cardinals this weekend. I don't like – I mean, this. They, well, this used to be an old NFC East game, for those of you that remember that. The, well, the old, the old divisions, the way they used when there was three divisions – there, that the central, I believe, maybe it was what that, that's the one that it was. But they were all together, and it was the Arizona Cardinals with the Skins and the Eagles and the Cowboys and the Giants. 
So this is a nice little playback to those times and, and those special moments. Redskins, I'm going with the Redskins on the road in this game. Arizona, Sam Bradford, well, like you said, this is the time you play Jordan Reed. This is the time that people play Jordan Sam Bradford because he's healthy. But I'm not a big fan of him in this game. Chase Edmonds, I'm looking to him right now. I want to see if he gets some touches. He was drafted in the fourth, fourth round out of Fordham, 2018 draft pick. I picked up Chase Edmonds in the 17th round of one of our recent drafts. And I'm going to be watching you, Chase. David Johnson, let's hope for the best, brother, and that you're back and good and good to go. He killed my season last season, hurt my heart, and I hope for everything that he's good to go this season doing his thing. Fitzgerald, I'm not against Fitz in this one. He's a he's a he's like a mid-range wide receiver too, low end wide receiver too for me. Watch Christian Kirk, watch Chase Edmonds, these two rookies. See how they perform and if they let them go out there at all. But I like Fitz and I like David Johnson. The other guys outside of Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald as wide receivers are Chad Williams and Trent Sherfield and JJ Nelson. Nelson people know Chad Williams out of Grambling State and Sherfield out of Vanderbilt, who was an undrafted free agent. Chad Williams was drafted in the third round out of Grambling State. I just I look at this and I say to myself, Christian Kirk has to emerge as the number one or at least the number two is the way things look right now. So just pay attention to him because he's left out there, I'm sure, from other people. And then Jermaine Gresham and Ricky Seals-Jones and all that good stuff, not a big fan of the tight ends in Arizona. So it's more of Fitz low ends and then David Johnson obviously is one of your starters and then for the one of your running back one I would say on your team the skins Alex Smith meh. let's let's watch and see what happens Adrian Peterson's been upgraded to the top guy Chris Thompson's too I like Chris Thompson as a flex player he's a home run hitter Adrian Peterson you can put him out there if you feel like it, but Arizona doesn't have a bad defense. I'd probably leave him off this week. And Josh Doxson, who came in hurt as an NFL player out of TCU and didn't really do much of anything last year, he's the number one guy there, then Jamison Crowder, then Paul Richardson. Trey Quinn made the roster like I knew that he would. He's one hell of an athlete. He was Mr. Irrelevant, but probably the best Mr. Irrelevant maybe ever when you look back at the grand scheme of things. So we'll see how he does in this. I think he'll work his way into the offense. But Doxon is a wide receiver, two to me, mid to low end, and I'm not sold on Paul Richardson. So not too much in these that I feel good about in these outside of David Johnson, Larry Fitzgerald, Chris Thompson, and maybe a, a dark horse in Christian Kirk. I want to get to that before we get to Sunday Night Football. Got to get to that Jaguars game. The Jaguars at the Giants, Mike. What do you have for this? Jags are going to run the ball. They're going to run the ball, and when they're done, they're going to run the ball some more. They're going to play some outstanding defense, taking the Jags in this game, of course, you know, on the road, in the Meadowlands, or I don't even know if they call it the Meadowlands anymore. It's up there. MetLife, I think, is what they call it. But, you know, the Jags aren't a, a flashy play in this one for me by any means at quarterback. Neither quarterback is going to overwhelm us. I think Eli may have the better end because he's got the better talent around him, especially at receiver. So, I, you know, again, either one of those guys could be a low-end you know, quarterback to either Bortles or Manning. And then looking at Leonard Fournette, how can you not like Leonard Fournette? And how can you not like Saquon Barkley? Both of these guys are running back ones. Fournette's a little higher ranked at five. I got Barkley at 11 in standard scoring. I think Barkley's going to inch up there some more. I think he's going to catch quite a few passes. There's talk that he might catch 80 passes this year, which is a lot for a running back. You know, that's more than he's done in college, but there's more of the year. There's 16 games in the NFL, so it's going to be interesting how they use him because, you know, sometimes those rookies hit that wall in week 12, 13, and we've seen it happen before, but I think Saquon Barkley is a freak-type athlete. I think he's more comparable to an Adrian Peterson. It's a generational talent, I think, but uh, we'll see what happens here against the ball. Jacksonville defense and you know what at, at receiver it's going to be that interesting matchup like we said before with Odell Beckham Jr. versus Jalen Ramsey I still think Odell Beckham Jr. is worthy of a wide receiver one designation this week he's just not one of the top ones he's number eight on my ranking and Jacksonville has a hard time getting that same type player I mean they may maybe it's a Keelan Cole I mean he's supposed to be thrust in in there you know Jacksonville's looking for those guys to step up at receiver so, you know, if you, if you have a D.D. Westbrook, you know, just be patient with these guys. It's going to take time. 
you know, but in the most part, Dante Moncrief, D.D. Westbrook, they're all the same guys. They're bottom end, but they got some upside. Moncrief having a little more experience. Maybe he can bring along this young talent that Jacksonville has at wide receiver. I know it's not going to do you any good this week. It is what it is, though. And at tight end, Evan Ingram outside the concussion protocol now number nine tight end on my rankings this week and of course jacksonville has austin severian jenkins but he might be a late minute scratch watch out for that jacksonville struggling at the tight end position right now as well again jacksonville in a narrow game in a narrow victory in new york against the giants yeah, you know, I got Jacksonville in this game. I think that this game could be played 28-23, something like that is what I would be looking to. We're going to start with the Jaguars on the road, as I always start with the road team. So to start off with the Jaguars, I like Leonard Fournette in this game, obviously, as a one. And then the wide receivers, it's wide open in the air. Keelan Cole, Dante Moncrief, DJ Chark. D.D. Westbrook, Jadon Mickens, Rashad Green. Mickens and Green probably are going to be your return people. But D.D. Westbrook, Chark, uh, Moncrief, and Cole are all going to be out there. If you're going to pick anybody as a backup wide receiver, a wide receiver three or four, I would look to, T- to Keelan Cole or D.D. Westbrook in this game if you're going to pick either or. I'm not a big fan of the Giants' secondary, so I do think that Blake Bortles could be a quarterback, too, for you this week. I like Leonard Fournette, and I like the defense of Jacksonville to go out there for you. And if you got their defense and you only drafted one defense, which is all you have to do in our league, then you're playing this one by default, and it's not a bad one to play. For the Giants, not a huge fan of Eli Manning in this game because of the defense he's playing up against and just how he's played in general in recent history. So Saquon Barkley, obviously, and Odell Beckham Jr., I would put them both out there. And then Evan Engram looks like he's okay right now, but he's playing the Jaguars. So you could look to any one of those three guys, but I think Evan Engram is your backup tight end this week. He's your tight end too. I think Odell Beckham is is a mid-range one because he's playing Jacksonville or low-end one. And Saquon Barkley, when in doubt, run the ball, and they finally have somebody to do it. So I would look to that game. Let's take our final step aside of the show, and when we come back in just a moment, We'll get you all set and ready to go with the final piece of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hours today as we've extended out for you. This is a Wake Up Call Fast Break. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Consistency is, well, consistently hard to find. Unless you head to 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York, the home of the Penn and Trophy Center, who has been serving us Central and Upstate New Yorkers, as well as beyond, for decades. The Penn and Trophy Center on 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York, gives you an amazing and unique way to customize a memory today. Say it with the Penn and Trophy Center. Be it an Employee of the Month award, a sports award, something for your business, engraving for your family, your loved ones, anniversaries, birthday parties, and so much more, including remembering somebody who served in the military. Say it with the Penn and Trophy Center. 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York. The definition of consistency 
is Penn and Trophy. Browse their products on penandtrophy.com. That's penandtrophy.com. And call them for more information at 315-422-8797. That's 315-422-8797. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcall. DT, happy to be here with you on the broadcast. Inside a wake-up call, Fantasy Football Power Hour is now the Power Hours as we have stretched into adding another hour onto today's show. We're going all the way up to noon, and we're very happy to be here with you. We thank you so much for tuning in, and we thank the Wildcat Sports Pub as well as the Penn and Trophy Center for proudly bringing you the Fantasy Football Power Hour, or in this case, Hours, with myself, of WakeUpCallDT.com, Dan Satora, and of course, Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame FantasyFootball.com, giving you, advi- your, you your advice and getting you ready, talking about injuries as well as our predictions for each game on which team will win and our thoughts on the fantasy value. So we are giving you all different layers, so much information for every single game, every single week. So as far as I'm concerned, there's only one place you need to be going. Bears at the Packers, Sunday night football. Let's get back into it, Mike. What do you got for this? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to watching this game, although I think it's going to be all Packers at home in Green Bay. It's hard to go up against Aaron Rodgers at home. Aaron Rodgers, the number one quarterback in fantasy for a few years, the number one quarterback this week as far as my rankings go as well. Mitch Trubisky, well, not so much, especially on the road in Green Bay. I got him as a top-end QB3 but it's not all his fault. It's just the situation. Young quarterback going into Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers is healthy. That's trouble. Now, running the ball is where the Bears are going to look a little better than Green Bay with Jordan Howard coming in at number 13, high-end running back two on my rankings. You know, and if you look at the other side of the ball, who, who's running the ball for Green Bay? Is it Ty Montgomery? I know it's not Aaron Jones with the two-game suspension. It's Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams, number 21 on my rankings, near bottom end, running back two for you. And then this is where you're going to find most of the money is where the wide receivers come in. You know, I'm looking at my wide receiver rankings, and Allen Robinson is a 21 against that Green Bay defense. I'm looking further down. I'm looking further down. Randall Cobb is a number 40 on my rankings. Oh, there he is. There he is. Devontae Adams is where all the value is in this game. Number six ranking on my on my ranks this week. And that's, that's not considering PPR, so he might go up a tick. He's the number one guy. He's the guy they're looking to throw the ball to in Green Bay. You may see some Geronimo Allison, but, again, most of it's going to be Devontae Adams. And if you're on the other side of the ball, Allen Robinson, and at the tight end position, I like Jimmy Graham. He looked excellent in the preseason, connecting with the quarterbacks there. I I can't wait to see red zone looks. I can't wait to see Jimmy Graham going up against the ball, going up and getting the ball in the air. Definitely a mismatch in the red zone for just about every team. Jimmy Graham. And then on the other side of the ball, what did Chicago do? Well, they went out and got some Trey Burton. Trey Burton, number 11 tight end, bottom end tight end one. I think they're going to throw a heavy dose of stuff at Trey Burton and try to use his athleticism and mismatches they can create in the field with Trey Burton. I like Green Bay in the game, but I think you can score some fantasy points on both sides of the ball here. Yeah, you know, I think that there's fantasy value on both sides here. Chicago's done a lot to try and build up their offense. Obviously, you got to play Aaron Rodgers in the game. I like Jamal Williams as a running back, too. Devontae Adams as a wide receiver, one. Randall Cobb as a wide receiver, two. Jimmy Graham as a tight end, one in this game. I don't mind putting him out there for that. There's a lot. I like the resurgence of Jimmy Graham. He had he made his hay when he had Drew Brees, and then he went over and had Russell Wilson, who didn't utilize him, and here he is with Aaron Rodgers, the best quarterback in the game, arguably, right now. I know Tom Brady wins Super Bowls, but just by sheer points and what he does, Aaron Rodgers is definitely the best fantasy quarterback in the game. As far as Chicago, not a big fan of the quarterback situation right now. 
I want to see how Mitch does, how he grows, how he blossoms. Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen, I would put them as my flexes. They are my running back threes this week. Because they're playing the Green Bay Packers, I'm I'm low end, let's say low end two on Jordan Howard, high end three on Tariq Cohen. And then as far as the receivers go, I they're playing up against Green Bay. So, you know, this this game is it's not and they're gonna be in Green Bay. So I'm not leaning on anybody receiver-wise for fantasy points. I hope Allen Robinson's healthy for the rest of his life, coming off of that ACL and eventually leaving Jacksonville, and I want to thank him for all the time that he's given to me. But uh, I like Anthony Miller as a dark horse, so definitely watch him and watch what he can do. The crazy thing about the Chicago Bears is that they're carrying six tight ends on their team. Two of them are on IR. And then they have four other tight ends, which is absolutely positively insane that they have that many tight ends. But Trey Burton is the guy that's out there right now. I would look at Trey Burton as a tight end too this week. And, you know, when in doubt, throw to your tight end for Mitch Trubisky. I mean, I think the best options are Trey Burton and Jordan Howard from the Bears. But to me, it's a whole lot of Packers with Devontae, Randall, Jimmy, Jamal, and, of course, the man they call Aaron Rodgers and Mike and I are both taking the Packers in this game. Jets at the Lions for Monday Night Football doubleheader. What do you have for this one? Yeah, this is a tale of two cities here. This is something different. Although, you know what? Nothing's changed as far as Matt Stafford's concerned. He's still a QB1, mid-level QB1. I like Detroit in this game. I think Detroit's going to win, not only because of the home team, it's just the Jets still aren't very good. They're going to roll Sam Darnold out there, but don't start Sam Darnold. You know, he's, he, he may be looking better. He may have upside. It takes a long time for most quarterbacks to progress in this league. Even Peyton Manning threw a bunch of interceptions. And Peyton Manning, who still, by the way, is 0-4 against the Florida Gators. I'll just leave that there. <laughs> um, you know, you know, Sam Darnold's going to be a great quarterback in a dynasty situation, just not right now. In the running back side, you know, Detroit's had some problems running the ball. They've, it's been a challenge for them. Is it going to be Theo Riddick? Is it going to be Amir Abdullah? No, it's going to be carry on Johnson. They went out and addressed the situation. Now, there's still going to be a committee approach, so temporary expectation. Carry on Johnson right now, I think the best running back on the roster. He's number 43 on my ranking, so I'm not excited to get him out there quite yet, but he is going to be the guy I'm confident to emerge as the primary guy, and he will show that upside and climb up the rankings, just not this week, not against that front four of the Jets. I'm looking at wide receiver, and, you know, again, hard-pressed to find a lot of talent here. But I like Marvin Jones. I like Marvin Jones above Golden Tate, even though he's technically the number two. He's probably got the easier cover guy. Marvin Jones, number 17 receiver on my rankings this week. And you know what? I... I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Robbie Anderson. Now, Robbie Anderson has some off-the-field issues he needs to worry about still. Things are supposedly cleared up for him. But, you know, Robbie Anderson, number 28 receiver on my rankings this week. And Kenny Galladay, number 37 receiver on my rankings for the Detroit Lions. I don't know who else is going to catch the ball for the Jets, though. That's a that's a problem that they have. You know, and looking at the at the tight ends, Who's the tight end who sticks out for either team? Nobody knows who these guys are. Stay away from the tight ends until they emerge. I'm talking about maybe a Hakeem Vallis for for Detroit. I'm talking about maybe for for the Jets. I I, I mean, I don't know. My, I, I'm having a hard time. I'm looking at these rosters going, who are they going to roll out there? They're not really going to roll out there. I love this guy. We talked about this guy before. The guy that Levine Toyolo. Used to be a Falcon. Is he going to be the guy for Detroit? I don't know. He couldn't get it done when he was a Falcon. So, you know, there's no value there in a tight end for either team in my book. But I still like the Lions squeaking one out in Detroit. I have to do this, Mike. I, I just I, I find that, that this is something that needs to be done today. So before I say anything about the Jets at the Lions, I have to. Carry on my wayward son. So I just I had to do that. I had to have my carry on thing, carry on my wayward son, carry on John, and carry on Johnson is not a bad option to uh, 
to obviously have out there on your roster, on your team, if you get a chance to, you know, it, you had to draft him more than likely because people were taking chances on carry on Johnson. But as we look at this game, Jets at the Lions, less than five minutes here, so I got to make it quick. Uh, Sam Darnold is going to have growing pains, so don't put him out there. Matty Stafford, he's a low end quarterback one. For me. I just don't get sold on Matt Stafford. I like carry on Johnson in the game, and LeGarrette Blunt in this game, Marvin Jones Jr. as well, and Kenny Galladay, Golden Tate, not bad to have a low-end quarterback or wide receiver. Twos for you out there could be higher end as we move forward. Robbie Anderson I like from the Jets and nobody else. Final game that we have here is Rams at Raiders for Monday Night Football. What do you got for this? Yeah, you know, the quarterback is where it's at for most teams. And Jared Goff proved himself worthy of the top pick he was a couple years ago. And this is a guy who's going to be the guy. He's going to be the guy for years to come for them. And I think if you had Jared Goff, you're going to be happy. He's a bottom-end QB1 for me in this in this game. And on the other side of the ball, until Derek Carr, I, th- I believe in Derek Carr, until they show me something different against that Rams defense, who has some top-notch defensive backs top-notch pass rushers and some top-notch linebackers. I think that the defense is going to gobble up the Raiders in this one. I like the Rams at home, but, you know, looking at these receivers that they have, who do they have? You know who they have? Todd Gurley. He's the receiver. He's not only the receiver, but he's the running back. He's the number one running back in fantasy football. I don't need to tell you that. On the other side of the ball, not so much. Marshawn Lynch. He's a number 24 running back on my ranking. Looking at the receivers quickly, you know, I'm, I'm looking at Amari Cooper. Can he have the bounce back here? He's a low-end wide receiver, uh, two in my book this week. And the Rams, the Rams have Cooper Cup. He's, again, a, he, he's not the top of the heap by any means, but he's a guy I can roll out there as a wide receiver three or a flex guy. And the tight ends, tight ends are up in the air for this one as well. Who's the tight ends? Don't worry about tight end in this game. I, I'm I'm not I'm not finding a value on on either team at tight end. I do like the the Rams in this game. I almost said Raiders again. I do like the Rams. <laughs> I think the Rams have it in them to make the Super Bowl run this year. Yeah, I got the Rams getting with a good chance of getting into the playoffs, fighting the Niners for the NFC West division. So I am going with in this game. I like Jared Goff in the game. I like Todd Gurley. I like. Cooper Cup as uh, as a high end wide receiver too. Brandon Cooks as a kind of mid range wide receiver too because we haven't seen a lot of great things out of him recently. Derek Carr is a quarterback too for me in this matchup. Marshawn Lynch uh, low end one as far as running backs go, and then Amari Cooper and Jordy Nelson are are wide receiver twos for me because the Rams bolstered up that defense and I like the defense. Mike, as always, I appreciate it, and I thank you so much, and I look forward to talking with you soon. All right, that coming from Mike Sofka, having him on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm picking the Rams. He's picking the Rams. See all the stuff on wakeupcalldt.com and hear from us tomorrow morning on our Friday show. TGIF, baby, we'll see you at 9 a.m. right here on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt.